This video demonstrates a set of techniques that allow Visual Cut to send highly formatted email messages, embedding within the message body dynamic HTML tables that provide detailed information from within the Crystal report. The advantage of HTML tables is that they can adjust themselves to the size of the screen, so users with mobile devices like iPhone, Blackberry can easily see the information and they don't need to click on any attachments. You already know that Visual Cut makes it very easy to embed report content, fields and formulas in an email message body. You simply drag and drop a field reference or a formula reference into the email message. This is what happened with these blue fields that you see here. In a similar way, the HTML table is simply a formula. It's a formula that returns the full syntax and content of an HTML table. It's a little bit more advanced in the sense that the formula needs to concatenate content into a string variable to build up the full content of the table. Let's see how we build that up in formulas inside Crystal Reports. This yellow formula returns the HTML table for each product type. And if we preview, it was unsuppressed so we can see the syntax, it's just a piece of text that begins with a table tag and ends with a close table tag. The table is declared to occupy 100% of the width of the screen. Within the table, we have a bunch of rows. Each row begins with a TR tag and ends with a closed TR tag. And each row has table elements or columns. And each table element begins with a TD tag and ends with a closed TD tag. In our case, the first table row declares the headers. And they're declared as 60%, 20%, and 20% of the full table width. And the three columns have the text of product, revenue, and days to ship. The BR here is just a new line character, so the days to ship will occupy two lines. We can also see that later on, we just added more rows, one for each product within the product type. So in this case, descent, this was the revenue, and this was the days to ship. And we can control the color using color directives, as you can see here. We can use big tags to control font size, and we can control background color for table rows, as you can see here. So let's see how this full formula achieved its value using some helper formulas that declare this piece, the table header, as well as formulas that kept concatenating content for each product. This formula placed in the group header level 1 restarts the definition of the table for each product type. If we go in, we can see that there are three steps. In HTML table step 1, group header 1, we set the variable that holds the table content into the table definition and the header information. In step 2, which repeats for each product type, we append a row of data. And finally, in step 3, which is the formula that we've seen, we close the table and present the final information. Right now, we're in the header for the whole thing. And we can see that in the header, we declare a string variable called HTML table. And then we set the HTML table to be the top portion of the table. So we declare again the table here. And we declare that it's 100%. And we set the three columns to what we want, 60%, 20%, and 20%. Notice that we're closing the table row here, but we're not closing the table yet. We need to add the information for each product. I'm going to unsuppress formula at group footer level 2, which is responsible for adding the actual data rows to the table. If we go in, we can see that it redeclares the HTML table string variable. That doesn't reset it. It just gives you access to the string variable. And then it adds to that string variable a data row. Uh, the CHR10 just starts a new line just for readability. It doesn't matter to the HTML syntax. And it begins with, let's add a table row. And it says, let's add a table element, which is left aligned. We need to escape any literal double quotes and make them two double quotes here. And they, OK, the first column is the product name. And then we close that table element here. And let's start a new table element, which is right aligned. 
And in this case, let's convert to text the sum of the revenue for the product name. Then we close that element and we start the final and third element, which is how many days it took to ship. This element is centered and you can see that depending on the value of the average number of days to ship, if it's greater than five, then because it's a slow shipping, then we set some color here to be red. And if the days to ship is less than three, then we consider that as fast shipping. And in that case, we specify an RGB color, which is green. At the end of this three elements, we close the table row. And then at that point, we can assume that there's going to be either a next product within the same product type that will add another row, or we just need to close the table and that's going to happen in the group footer. So let's look at the final formula that we looked at before, the group footer level one formula, and it's quite simple. All it does, it's saying, hey, I just reached the end of this product type, so I need to close the HTML table. So it takes the string variable, the HTML table, and just adds to it the close table tag. That's it. So now if we save and close and preview to see the information, we can see that at the top, we declared the table. And then as we got into the first product, we added one table row. In the second product, we added a second table row. In the third product, we added the third and final table row. And finally, at the end, we have what we saw before, which is the full syntax for the HTML table. Now, this formula is in the group footer level one, and hence we have access to it from within Visual Cut. So let's open the report in Visual Cut. In real life, you don't need to keep these formulas visible, of course. We don't really need to export anything or attach anything. We just need to email the report or the information for each product type. I'll keep the from email as my own information. In the to email, I'll just adapt it to include the name of the product type. And we can drag the product type name in there. It's, we don't need to attach. All the information is going to be embedded in the email message body. The subject is going to be, say, the product type name, performance in, and we can use the year parameter. So I can do something like, hi, here is your report. For, and we can drag the year parameter. I can sign off. And let's now embed the HTML table. So if I pick up the HTML table three group footer one, which is the final result of the table that I want, I may think that this is going to work, but it's not because this is an HTML table. And currently, the email message is not formatted as HTML. What I need to do is I need to enclose this whole thing with HTML tags. So I could manually go in and put in HTML. And at the end, I can close this with forward slash HTML tag. And now it's going to actually work. But it might be much easier to control things within this HTML message using a full HTML editor. And that's the convenience provided by this button. To demonstrate what happens when the message is not in HTML syntax, I'll remove these HTML tags and click on this editor button. It offers to swap it into HTML syntax, and I'll click OK to accept it. Click OK just to show you, first of all, what was the set of changes that were made by this step. It added a header section to the HTML syntax. The body section still contains the past information that I had in the message body before. Hi, here's your report, and so on. And in the header section, there's information here about the title and about some cascading style sheets. That's the CSS that you see here. And by default, I'm electing to change the body font to 10 points for Dana. And same thing with TD, or if you remember, those are the table elements. So the text inside tables will be also Verdana and 10 points.
So let's click on this button and control some of these elements using this GUI editor. Enter will start a new paragraph. Shift Enter will start a new line. I can get rid of these fake links because of the at sign. This editor assumes that these are email links, like mail to links. So I can click once inside any one of these, right click and remove the link. Do the same thing on this one. I can change any element here by clicking on bold. I can change the color to, let's say, blue. I can add a horizontal line using this icon. Insert tables. Add numerical lists or unordered lists. I can add links. I can control alignment, as you can see here. One thing that I can do that is kind of nifty is the ability to insert an image. So if I click on this image button and select my little logo here, I just added a logo to the email message. And I can even select and right click that image and insert a link there to my website. Looks like we have, again, need to remove some links here. Okay, we can also preview. So this HTML editor, when we go to the preview mode, does the replacement of all the references to the fields and formulas with their dynamic content. If I'm happy with that, I can save. If I'm not, I can go back and edit things. I'll just click OK. We'll click Save, and we can run the process and see what it produces. Visual Cut is currently set to use the Email 2009 engine and deposit outgoing emails to this folder. We can start the process and these emails are indeed now in the outgoing folder. I can open the competition email and I can see that the dynamic HTML table is behaving as planned. I can open the email for logs and see a different number of rows and different information. Just to review the benefits of this technique, for one thing, users who receive these emails can easily forward and reply to, and the content and the formatting would be preserved. The other major benefit, of course, is that you can send this information to somebody with a mobile device like iPhone and Blackberries, and the table width is going to adjust itself to the screen width.